Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. You never really know what somebody's capable of, man. You don't. People run around these streets thinking everything's sweet, thinking they're going to do this, they're going to do that. You don't never know what the next man might do. You don't never know what the next man's capable of. Sometimes you don't even know what you're capable of. But you'll find out. You know, you play with fire long enough, you'll get burnt. Today I'm going to get into some stories, man, on dudes that did things that we didn't see coming, that I didn't see coming. Some of these guys did things they didn't even mean to do. Like I said, nothing shocks me. Doing all that time in prison, all the time in jail, detention centers, I done seen things that most people can't even comprehend as the truth. Most people can't even comprehend as a fact because they've never had to experience or live through anything like that. To them, it's got to be a lie. And that can't be real. Because like I said, unbelievable things happen. You see things you would never expect. That's what we're going to talk on today. Y'all know I done seen it. Y'all know I done lived through it. Once again, let's relive it. Now, had I just started off with being a criminal or a life of crime or whatever you want to call it. If I had just started all that prior to, you know, me catching my time, my, my 10 years and going away, then I might have been shocked by a lot of things I saw when I did get locked up and sent off. But the facts of the matter is, that was something I've been doing since since I was very young. Like young, like when a lot of y'all were riding y'all's bikes and, you know, playing Nintendo and Super Mario. I was just a kid. I was already locked up. I was already in a cell. And from there, it just got worse. But when you're that young and you start witnessing things that you didn't know really happened in the world or that the average people don't see or hear about. Then by the time you get in your mid-20s and, and you head off to prison, it, it, it takes quite a bit to shock you, man. It really does. It takes something like almost catastrophic, like something just unbelievable to, to like draw your attention. And there would be many times during my bid that if I had to sit down and write a list of things that would be the craziest things I ever saw, some of these things far, far surpassed the craziest things I'd ever seen. But this applies to the streets also. And the first story I'm going to give y'all today comes out of Philly. The city of brotherly love. 215 stand up. Salute to all my Philly cats. Philly couldn't be anything further from the city of brotherly love. man. I know dudes out there that have killed their best friends I've heard of dudes out there killing their own brother I've got so many different homeboys that I used to be out there with in Southwest man off Elmwood Ave or you know wherever over at Finnegan Park off 68 down off Carroll Street all these different dudes I knew at one point a large majority of them are now dead. And what's crazy than that is even more of them are locked up for homicides, for murders, for bodies. There was one dude in particular that kind of took me by surprise when I found out that he had caught, you know, what he caught. And it was because I just didn't see it coming. I had other homeboys, dude Mike Baker, um, O.T. The Real, if y'all don't know who O.T. The Real is, he's, you know, he's a rapper, you know, he raps a lot about Philly, Kensington, I think he's from like, I, I want to say he's from the Mass area, but I'm not going to, don't quote me on that, but I know that Philly loves him, and you know, when it boils down to it, he's been through Philly, he's been through the system long enough that he's a Philly cat, no doubt about it, but O.T. talks about Mike Baker a bit, 
me and Mike Baker, when I caught my, my first serious charge out Philly, you know, we was together. Mike has now gone on to catch a body. He did 16, came home after doing, I think it was 16, and caught a body. So, and the commission of a robbery, Mike will never be home. That didn't shock me. That didn't surprise me. Because I knew Mike and I knew how he got down. I knew that if you wanted to take it there, Mike would take your top off. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to throw fists, he'd throw fists with you. But if you wanted to escalate it to where there was guns involved, he wasn't afraid to take a bullet and he damn sure wasn't afraid to give you everyone he had. So without any further ado, let's get into today's story, man. I'm young. And I mean young. I'm shit. It's before I went to prison. I'm going to leave some of these details out. Just in case homeboy's case is still being worked on. He's got any chance of ever seeing the light of day again. I'm going to leave his name out. Certain dates out. I'm going to even leave the years out. Because I don't want to see nobody get jammed up, right? But I get jammed up in Philly. And prior to that, we was out there just doing what we did, man. You know, we was hustling up and down the block all day from one stoop to the next stoop. Drinking 40s, in and out of cars. You know, we might be up in Southwest one minute and then be over in West Philly the next minute. Or, you know, up in North Philly the next minute. And that, you never really knew where your day would take you, right? We're all sitting out front of where we live at one day. And we hear shots. Down, 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 down. Whole bunch of shots go off, right? And we know they're close. Because you hear gunshots on a regular basis. You know, I right, that's off in a distance. And, oh, shit, that was kind of close. You know what I mean? Where's it coming from? You look to see if anybody's running. If you see anybody, you know, anything out the ordinary. We ain't seen nothing, so we just went back to what we was doing. We are drinking them crooked eyes, St. Eyes 40s, just sitting out there bucking 40s, all zannied up, maybe 1, 2 o'clock in the evening. We decided to walk up the street to this place. I don't know for you Southwest cats. I don't know if Matty Wands is still out there, but we had a bodega name called Matty Wands that used to be our Philly. So we go ahead and see y'all. I said, I'm going to walk up to Matty Wands and grab some more beers. Y'all trying to walk? Yeah, let's walk. We go up there when we... You know, bend the corner, come up the street as a dude stretched out. Now, like 20, 30 minutes have passed, and they've got the crime scene tape up. Police, you know, everywhere. They got this this dude out there, and they're trying to, the cops are trying to, like, kind of stand close together so people can't look in and see what's going on. It's not like the movies where they cover the body <clears throat> with a white sheet. They weren't doing all that because they were still investigating what was going on, right? As we approach and we get closer, you know, to Matty Wands, we realize, damn, we know the dude. We know the dude laying on, on the ground. You know, he's a dude that's a little bit older than us. Known to be kind of a bully. We didn't ever really have no problems with him. But he was known to pick on the young boys. Like, he'd kick them in the ass, slap them in the back of the head, rag on for what they were wearing. But we didn't have no problems with the dude, right? I guess he knew, like, we wasn't them young boys, like, you jump on one of us, slap one of us, we'll beat the shit out you out here. We'll, like, we'll hurt you out here, right? So we can't go to Matty Wands because it's right in front of Matty Wands. So we're like, shit. So we spin on down the block, go to another spot. We go to a place called The Hut off Greenway Avenue. Anybody remember The Hut? It was like a little bar that, like this little hole in the wall bar. And in Philly, you can go in the bar and sit down and have drinks. Or you can go in the bar, order a 40, walk around in the bar, drink it a 40. Or you can go in the bar like, let me get 640s and walk out with them. So we go up to the hut, go in there, buy some beer, come out, boom, shoot back over to where we was at, right? Talk about it a little bit like, damn, somebody smoked dude's boots, you know what I mean? I seen, I seen that shit coming. That shit ain't shocked me. Like, he just liked to play too much. Later that evening, we're at the park. And a young boy comes around. And the young boy is just, uh, he's somebody who's been picked on. But he's a little pretty boy, too. And he gets money. You know what I mean? Like, he's got a whole different clientele from what we do. He don't do all the walk-ups and hand-to-hands. He more or less has got people he knows that 
he'll hop on his bike and, and ride over to their house and drop off whatever they're looking for, pay somebody a couple of dollars to give him a ride. He'll jump on a scepter bus, head across town. You know, it's just how he was getting down. We more or less stuck to our area and hustled in our area. Young boy comes to the park. What y'all doing? You know what I mean? We ain't doing shit. We're chilling. What's up with you? But now it's it's nighttime. We're lit, right? You're like, shit, I'm trying to drink. So, you know, boom. Somebody gives you something to drink. You're sitting there drinking with us. And she's like, y'all heard a dude got, got got killed up the block today. I'm like, yeah, yeah. We walked. We was actually up there, man. We walked up to, to Matty Wands and the dude was stretched out in front of the store. He's like, yeah, that shit's crazy, man. Dudes is out here laying everybody down, man. Like, we got to be careful out here. So we're just kicking it, man. Just talking like average, right? And so a couple of days goes by. A couple of days goes by and Philly shootings are just, it's a normal thing. A lot of dudes died of gun violence. Hearing somebody got shot, shot at, was no big thing. The majority of my homeboys up there had been shot already. You know, had wounds from bullets. It's just, a, it's a part of Philly, man. It's sad, but it's, it's how it is. Couple days later, we hear about another body over by the park, down at the down by the you know the very end of the street, and we're like, damn. We get to asking around who it was and shit. Come find out, it was it was a smoker. It was a dude that got high. We're like, all right, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, damn, we got it's hot out here. We can't do a whole lot now. Can't really hustle where we was hustling at because detectives are coming around asking everybody questions. You know, they're down, you know, at the end of the block. They still talking to the store owners up here and people that own stores trying to figure out what happened with the last body. So we're all just like, damn, everybody, you can't walk around with a gun on you. Now you got to keep the gun hidden somewhere because at any given moment, these, they had this, they had what's called Project Sunrise at the time, Project Safe Streets, all these things were going on. And the police were just jumping out on us and lining us up against the wall or laying us on the ground and just searching us for weapons and drugs, right? This had become just a regular occurrence with us. We knew when we went out the house that wherever we were going to hustle at for the day or we are going to be at to go ahead and take what we had on us off and put it somewhere else because there's a good chance we're going to get searched, right? We're going about our business. Block is hot. Cops are coming around all the time. Texans coming around all the time. Homicides out there questioning people. You know, they're trying to see which stores got cameras and whatnot to figure it out. Boom. Another dude gets killed. Okay. Up off Elmwood Ave. It's a couple days later. Another dude gets killed, right? So we're thinking, damn, somebody's at me late. They out here getting it in. We don't have no clue who it could be. Like, it ain't none of us. You know what I mean? We always together for the most part until nighttime when we spread off and go our directions and go home. We're sitting at the park one night, and the young boy I told you about that came up after the after the first shooting comes rolling up on his bike. When I say he's young, he's like 17. He had actually just turned 18 after like the first two shootings, right? He comes pulling up on the pedal bike, and he's like, "What's up with y'all?" Same thing as always. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we just I posted up. What's up with you? Like, ain't shit. He was like, "Shit, it's crazy out here, huh?" So. What you talking about? He's like, man, my father's getting laid down. Lifts his shirt, and he pulls out probably one of the biggest 45s I've ever seen in my life. He said, man, ain't nobody about to lay me down. You know what I mean? Like, I'm strapped up out this bitch, man. Like, somebody tried me, I'm going to pop. I'm going to tear their head off. So we're looking at the young boy like, yeah, all right, man. We hear you. You know what I mean? Thinking, man, this dude ain't going to shoot nothing. Ain't going to pop shit. Ain't going to let nothing die. Somebody going to slap him up and take that gun from him. That's what I thought. I thought he gonna, he gonna pull up on these older dudes, man. They gonna pop, 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 and pull that shit right out of his pants and snatch it from him, right? I want to say there's maybe another two days passes, and there's two shootings this time. But the problem is both the people that get shot live. They both survive being shot. He ran up on a stoop. Dude ran up on a stoop. And a stoop is you go up a set of steps and then there's a little flat landing before you go in your front door. That's what we call the stoop. The stoop is where we just, when you come out the door and you sit down on the steps, that's the stoop, right? So, dude runs up on two dudes on a stoop he had beef with or they've been harassing him or whatever and pops them both. Bom, 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 bom. Takes off. I get jammed up the following night. 
the following night we're out there cops come through i get snatched up on some charges my homeboy brian philly my brother man he gets snatched up and we get you know sent off we go to 55th and pine stay there a couple days leave 55th and pine and we go to cfc so we go through the whole booking process we go through the intake pod then from there we go to wherever we're gonna be in the jail right and it just so happened that um me and my brother man we ended up landing in the same pod which the chances of that happening are like phenomenal because cfc have such a big place but he had hollered at the dude one of the guards was cool like yo put me with my brother man send me with my brother man so they send him with me and we get over there and we run into the young boy man that same young boy that was out there on that bike that had pulled up on us several times and showed us that, that 45 we run into him he's in the jail like i told you he just turned 18 right and what is what, what the hell you know what i mean Come find out, he got locked up that same night. It's the night before we got locked up. The same night them two shootings took place, he got locked up. He was the one that was running around shooting people. He was in there for three bodies and two attempts and a gun charge. That kind of took me by surprise, man. We sat and sat at the table and I talked with him for a minute and I was like, bro, like, fuck, what, you, what is you doing, man? Why you get jammed up? Why you in here, man? You too young to be in here. He was like, shit. He was like, they got me on three bodies and two attempts. I said, man, stop lying, man. You got no three bodies and no two attempts. He was like, I do, man. I do. So he pulls out his paperwork and starts showing me like his charges and whatnot. We're still in the jail. At this point, people still have their paperwork because it's just been given to you. You're going back and forth to court, right? And I start looking, and the first one is, sure enough, the shooting in front of Matty Wands. The other one is the shit on Woodland. The other one was, you know, the one down past the park. And then the two attempts we had just heard about, right? We didn't know if the people died. We just had heard they got shot. Young boy told us that he come across this gun. He found this gun. I guess somebody else out there on another block, it stashed it somewhere. He came across it and found it. So I just got fed up, man. He said, everybody always took me for a joke. Tried to play me, tried to play with me. Play me for pussy, they thought I was soft. He was like, you know, you know what I mean? Ain't nothing soft, ain't nothing pussy about me, man. He was like, if I was y'all's age, I'd have been shutting shit down. I'm just younger than y'all, so y'all know how it is, man. So I'm like, so you body three dudes, man, and tried to kill two more, and he was like, I ain't gonna say his response, but that's what the paperwork say. It just goes to show you, man. When you're messing with somebody, you never really know who you're messing with. You never really know who you have around you. You never really know what people are capable of, can and will do. This is a crazy world we live in. This is a world where you know, recently it came out that it was a 16-year-old shooter in Philly that I think right now he's sitting with like four bodies. And everybody's like, oh, that's nothing new. That's nothing new. You talk to Philly dudes and ask them, how many 16-year-olds you know that got a body? And I guarantee you, pretty much anybody that really lived like that or was ever out there, is going to raise their hand and be like, shit, I know a 16-year-old that got a body. Some of them going to raise their hands and be like, I know 13-year-olds or 12-year-olds that got a body. Just how it goes, man. Watch who you bully. Watch who you pick on. Watch who you run your mouth to and who you mess with. Because the next man or the next young man might not be with all that. They're talking. The next person might not be with you. Kicking them in the ass or slapping them in the back of their head or laughing at them because of how their shoes look. You keep looking for trouble. You keep stirring the pot. Talking shit about somebody. Messing with somebody. Don't be surprised. 
When they give your ass what you're looking for. You might not be looking for what they're ready to give you. But you don't get to decide what they're going to give you. That's their choice. Now, just to clear this up, when it comes to this YouTube... Let me roll these windows up real quick. When it comes to this YouTube thing and what I do... I do my best to try to teach y'all, man. My best to try to, to, to reach somebody. To keep somebody from ever having to walk in my shoes. I do my best to be honest about everything. Give it to you even when I don't want to talk about it, I talk about it. When I first started doing this, I didn't know what was going to come of it. What I did know is that when I turned that camera on, and I started talking. It helped me release the things that kept me awake at night. The things that most people would go see a counselor and lay on a on a couch and talk to a counselor about. Pay $100 an hour to speak to somebody that just listens. That's what YouTube is for me. It allows me to put it out there to the world so the world knows what it is help people, and at the same time, it helps me in hopes of, like I said, keeping somebody from ever going through what I'm going through, what I've been through. I want y'all to go through what I'm going through now. I want y'all to know you can have the life that I live these days, that it is possible to turn your life around after you're released and go on to be successful and to be more than you ever thought you could be, that it's possible you can do it. I've never spoke on people when it's not my place to speak. If I did time with you and we crossed paths and, you know, we had some type of problem, I'll speak on it in my stories because that's the stuff y'all are going to deal with. For the sick dudes I did time with, you know, I speak on it. That's what you're going to have to deal with. But when it comes to all the YouTube drama and beef, and this person talking about this person. And this person talking about that person. That's not what I'm about. I don't want... I'm like Mary J. No more drama, man. I'm fed up with drama. I'm a grown-ass man. I got a whole entire family. Kids. A whole entire construction company. This channel I run. But you got to understand that when I turn this camera off, I'm just J. I go right back to work like everybody that that works that's watching this. So I'm not with all that, you know, all that other shit, man. That's not what I want to be remembered for. I don't want drama surrounding my name. I don't want drama surrounding me. And that's not what I'm going to do. You know, people ask me questions sometimes. What do you think about this? Or you think about that? I don't. At the end of the day, if what somebody else is doing isn't a good look for what I'm doing or I don't agree with it, or I don't know what the truth of the matter is, I cut myself free from it, and I go in my direction, and I continue to do J. Because when I'm old and I look back on my life, and I have to think about the decisions that put me where I'm at that day, each decision I make today and from day to day are going to play a major part in that. So what I won't ever do is become part of the circus. That's why I'm not too pressed on doing all these interviews and talking to this person and that person like i got one coming up this weekend i know dudes gonna want to talk about some things you know what i mean but i'm gonna be real with you i'm not somebody that's gonna jump on camera and just tell everybody what they want to hear because no matter what i say i'm wrong and i'm right to these people i'm right to these people i'm wrong to these people i'm wrong to these people i'm right Everybody's always going to have something to say. So I stick to the script. To any upcoming YouTubers, anybody that really wants to turn this into something more than just talking to a camera, I suggest you do the same. Don't be the guy that is known for having a whole lot of drama or a whole lot of problems or just is always in the middle of something. Because this shit always ends bad, man. People think that just because you see it and it's taking you know, place through a camera, that that's where it can end. When we all know, the only difference between now and back in the day is that 
now with the camera, you can say it out loud and the world can hear it. Back in the day, you said it to somebody over the phone and y'all knew firsthand what it was. There's a reason for me telling y'all this and we're going to get into it with my next story. So 2004, I'm in jail and got myself jammed up. Same my first go round, ain't the first time in this jail. I'm used to the process. I'm guess, you know, at that point, I'm you could call me a vet when it came to incarceration because it's all I've ever really known. There hasn't been many periods in my life where a year didn't consist of me going to jail. That's just the brutal, honest truth. Since being young, I can't remember where I stayed a solid six months on the streets without getting locked up. Now, out here, I need you to understand this because a lot of people get shit misconstrued. Y'all get shit messed up. You hear Virginia, you might think of cows. Oh, there's cows out here. You might think of trees. Oh, there's plenty of trees out here. But where I'm from, it's not like that. Most states, you can go see cows. There's parts in New York, you can go see cows. There's places in Pennsylvania, you can go see cows. There's places in California that if you go, you know, out into the to hills and stuff, you can see cows. Virginia is a place that you can come and get money legally or illegally and make a lot of it. Virginia is also just like you know, with Richmond and Petersburg, it's like any other city across America. <sighs> you have poverty, high crime rates, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. It's, it's, it's not much different from anywhere else. Well, out here, it's mainly Richmond and Petersburg, man. Right? Richmond and Petersburg are just known for the, the high homicide rates. People getting killed, people getting locked up. Majority of the time when you turn on the news, it's something happened in Richmond or something happened in Petersburg. Well, in 2004, I'm sitting in jail and this dude comes in and he's got a gun charge. Soon as he gets in there, he starts talking shit about the dude he got locked up with. Why they put him in another part of the jail? We got locked up. We was in the same car together. He got caught with dope. You know what I mean? I got caught with the gun on me and... Dude's a snitch. He's telling everybody this. Now, where we're at, the pod we're in, his homeboy is located right across from us, but they can't. You can see each other through glass, but you can't see each other. Like, you can't bump or get, you know, close enough to touch each other, right? So he's done said this, this guy's a snitch stuff so much that everybody else is saying it. This guy ain't done nothing to him. The jail, a lot of times, if you come in on the same case, they will separate you so that y'all can't get together, get your stories the same, interact, and then go to court with a lie. They try to keep y'all separate from each other. Well, this dude ain't never been to jail before. He's got a gun charge. He's under the impression, well, if they put him over there, he must be telling on me. He must be telling on me. It's all he's telling everybody. He's telling on me. He's telling on me. He's telling on me, right? I hadn't met this other dude at this point. I hadn't. I just met the dude that, that had the gun charge, right? I didn't even know who the hell this dude was talking about. No clue. With court, court can take, you know, you can be done with court if you plead out in a couple months. If you fight it, take it to trial, that shit can take a year better. It all depends, you know, on your lawyer and how much evidence they have. So I was in the jail for a while, for a good while. This dude ends up getting found guilty on the the gun charge and his homeboy ends up beating the drug charge. Now they're two separate cases. So y'all aren't going to be in the courtroom at the same time. You're not on the same case. And that's what this dude couldn't get through his head is they separated charges because they'll do that a lot of times if you're co-defendants, but y'all aren't co-defendants. You got your charge. He got his charge. They most likely separated y'all because that's where they had space in the jail at. Put you over here because that's where they had space for you. And they put him over there because there was an open bed over there. It's not always going to be 
you're separated so that you can't get a story together or, you know, because somebody's telling the guy with the drug charge beats the drug charges. This guy took the shit out of his pocket, dropped it down beside the seat. Cops found it beside the seat. Since it's in his vicinity, they charged him with it. The driver, dude that was in my pod, had a gun under his seat. Since it's in his reach, he got charged with a the gun. They're not going to charge him with the dope that was on the passenger side of the car because it's pretty obvious you didn't reach over the passenger and put it there. They're not going to charge the passenger with a gun under the driver's seat because it's pretty obvious when we got pulled it. You know, you, I didn't reach over there and put it underneath the seat. The dudes, they both got their charges. Well, the dude's lawyer argues on the drug case that stuff could have been dropped by somebody else that was in the car earlier that day. There's no way to prove that this is his client's drugs. Y'all didn't get no, no DNA, no nothing off the bag. Nothing's coming back to tie it to him other than he got in the car and sat down in the seat and didn't see it laying there. Now this dude with his gun charge is snapping. He's been sentenced for a stolen firearm. He's going to have to do some time behind this. So he's talking to anybody that will listen and everybody bashing this dude about this, you know, this drug charge. He's saying, oh, no, nah, he had to have told him that the gun was mine. How did he beat his drug charge? This is all we hear all day long. He wants to tell this to anybody and everybody that will listen. Meanwhile, this dude is over in this other pod. It's like made his, the word over there to people over there this dude's having a hard time he's having to fight behind being called a snitch you don't call nobody no snitch you don't call nobody outside their name unless you know 100 percent facts that what you're saying is true unless you know this man told like stay my stay in your lane mind your business right dude beats his drug charge he goes home well now when he returns to his neighborhood out out in petersburg everybody's just, i ain't what's up man why you told on dude why you told on dude He's dealing with this a lot. He's dealing with this to the point that he can't even walk down the same streets or be in the same hood that he was in prior to going to jail because this dude has painted him out to be a snitch, and he wasn't. Nowhere, anywhere did it say he was a snitch. This is just what this guy had thought in his head, so he told the world, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe say it was maybe 45 days, man. Might have been longer. It could have been two months, three months. But I don't remember being that long. I think it was maybe like six weeks. And the guy that had the drug charge comes walking into our pod. This is when I meet him for the first time. Find out who he is for the first time. And he goes, puts his stuff in the cell. He's standing out there looking around. Sees his homeboy that had the gun charge. It had been telling everybody... He was the police. Oh, he's a snitch. He's a rat. He's this. He's that. Dude felt the type of way. And I'm going to get into why dude was locked up. Dude goes over to his cell. Goes up in the cell. Well, you know, while dude's in there, dude don't even know this dude has shown up. This dude asked a couple people like, hey, yo, what cell such and such sleeping? He knew he was there because they were in different pods right across from each other. Got to be there unless he got moved. Hey, what cell such and such sleeping? He tells him. He goes in there and he commences to f just fucking this boy up, man. Huh? He was bigger than the dude that caught the gun charge. The dude that had the drug charge originally was bigger than the boy with the gun charge. Goes in there and just, I mean, just beats his ass, man. Beats him, beats him, tells him, call me a snitch again. Call me a snitch again. Call me a snitch again. Your dumb ass got yourself jammed up. I told you don't be bringing the gun with you. Blah, blah, blah. We hear all this, right? It's not far from where we're at. You know, sitting out there playing spades and whatnot. He's just dragging him. You're not a snitch. You're not a snitch. T call me a snitch again. Meanwhile, he's got him pinned down. He's just hitting him in the side of his face. Hitting him in his face. Hitting him in his face. They ain't friends no more, bro. You done called me a snitch. You done put bones on my name. You done started a lot of drama. I was over there fighting because of you. And it gets deeper. After that, after he beat this dude up, the guards see him. We, get our, we go to get our child that, that evening. And this dude's face is all mangled. And they're asking him what happened. Like, what happened to your face? He won't tell them what happened. He won't say nothing. So for his own safety, they take him and move him out of, of our, our pod and into another pod. He didn't ask him to. He, he took the ass whooping like a man. He ran his mouth loud on his dude. He wore his ass whooping. You know what I mean? What, like you're supposed to. You don't tell the police what happened, right? We would go on to find out that this dude that was being called a snitch that was never a snitch, was back in jail because of what this dude had been saying. 
He went back to his neighborhood in Petersburg, back to where he lived in Petersburg. And this is 04. And had to deal with everybody running their mouth to him. Just like he told the young dude, the dude, he told him, said, man, you shouldn't be riding around with a gun unless we're going somewhere where we need it. This dude just rode around with his gun for whatever reason, right? But he didn't ride around. The whole time he was in jail, his gun was at the house. Dudes kept talking that shit. You can't do this. You can't do that. He got fed up with it, went to his house one day, got his gun, walked down the block, and the first dude that came out their mouth called him a snitch, accused him of doing this and that, or told him that he couldn't be out there. He pulled out and shot right in the chest. Boom! Blew this boy backwards onto the concrete. I would ultimately go on to be shipped off to prison. I don't know what happened with dude's case. I don't know how much time he was given because you got to thank his case with a homicide. He probably had to, you know, fight that case for the next year. But that's why I told y'all everything I told y'all in the beginning. Running your mouth can lead to some real bad shit. It can get you attention and it can bring you the type of attention that you're not looking for, man. All these dudes are chiming in on this dude. And didn't know the truth of the matter. They just knew what they were hearing or had been told or had assumed. And the dude that was under, that was being pressed, that was dealing with all this, dealing with all this pressure, goes back to his neighborhood after fighting in jail and having to deal with being called a snitch in jail and a bitch and, you know, all these different things in jail and being shunned. He goes back to his neighborhood, has to deal with it, and it ends with him killing somebody that had absolutely nothing to do. With any of it. That's what y'all need to draw from this. Everything ain't for everybody, man. You got to decide at the end of the day. What your purpose is and what you going to do. Just because one person does something. Don't mean you got to do something. Now they say if he jumps off a cliff. You going to jump off a cliff. He jumps off a bridge. You going to jump off a bridge. For me, most times. When I'm not on camera, I'm quiet. I listen. I observe. I watch what's going on around me. People will come to me and ask me, Hey, Jay, you heard this and this and this? Come on, man. Miss me with that. I try to apply my energy, myself, to things that I know are going to bring me something better in life. I've come to learn at a later age in life that whenever I fully apply myself to something, no matter what it is, I get either the results I'm looking for or better. And if I'm applying myself to something negative, I always get the worst. If you got a good head on your shoulders, you're a smart person, you know right from wrong. Take all that energy that you push towards doing this or doing that or saying this or saying that and apply it towards pushing yourself forward. Apply it towards feeding your kids. Apply it towards just being a good person in general. The universe, God will deal with everybody else around you that is doing what they ain't supposed to be doing or that has done what they ain't supposed to be, ain't done. Karma is real. Karma will come back to get your ass when you least expect it. Nobody here watching this understands fully what you can do at times and what's going to come with it unless you've been through what I've been through. And a lot of y'all have. Just because you got a gun don't mean shit. Let me tell you what's going to happen here in the state of Virginia. You pull out a gun and shoot somebody, your ass is going to prison. I don't care if it's your gun, if you got a right to carry it, I don't care what kind of permit you got. Pull your gun out here in the state of Virginia and shoot somebody that's unarmed or shoot somebody that wasn't attacking you and you'll end your ass up in prison. The more the story is, you have the option of controlling what happens in your life. What you do from day to day is going to determine where you're at and even if you're still here years to come. That dude that got shot in the chest out of Petersburg for calling dude a snitch and telling him he couldn't have been on that block. That wasn't his place. Had I been him, I'd have fell back from dude. I ain't got to stand there and bash you and run my mouth. This ain't my business. I don't know nothing. Only people that really know what happened is, you know, you and God. 
For me to stand there and speak on it, I ain't neither one. It's not my spot. Had that dude not jumped in the middle of something and started speaking on a man and something that had nothing to do with him, he'd still be here today. I don't know if dude beat the body. I mean, I know here in Virginia, it's hard to beat anything. I don't know if, you know, he's how much time he got in prison. I don't know. But I know that one person running their mouth, which was his decision, led this man to make his decision. Think before you act, people. You only get one life. Ain't no, ain't no redos. Ain't no restarts. Ain't no extra lives. Ain't no little heart you can run and jump on like in the video game and respawn. And that goes for death and with the penitentiary. Once they take it from you, it's gone. So anyway, man, these detention centers, these facilities, prisons, jails, and these streets. They're all just crazy worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in and as always y'all know what i'm doing i'm just trying to keep y'all entertained are you not entertained this is jay williams let's live life and to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching because y'all still watching me y'all know how we do salute